Frank Jones Brewing started in 1858 making ales. The company didn't survive Prohibition and was taken over by rival Eldridge Brewing in 1933. Brewing ceased in 1950 because of consumer preference for lagers. Huffell's Brewing started in 1865 in the Bronx, did not survive Prohibition. Peel's Beer started in Brooklyn in 1883 making lagers. Unable to compete with the national brewers, it was sold to Associated Brewing Company in 1963. Peel's Beer labels are now owned by Pabst. F&M Schaefer Brewing got its start in New York City in 1842, making lagers then a style unheard of. Up until 1971, Schaefer had breweries in Brooklyn and Albany, New York, and Baltimore, Maryland. In 1971, Schaefer built a modern brewery near Allentown, Pennsylvania, with a capacity of 5 million barrels per year. In 1981, Schaefer was bought by Stroll Brewing, which itself was purchased by Pabst Brewing in 1999. FX Matt got its start in Utica in 1888. The same beers made a century ago are still being produced. Bartels Brewing began brewing lagers and ales in 1893 in Syracuse. Lion Brewing of Wilkesbury still produces Bartels beer for the local market. In 1955, some Detroit businessmen bought the Iroquois Brewing Company in Buffalo, New York and formed international breweries with plants also in Michigan and Kentucky. Horlacher Brewing started out as a soft drink company in mid-1870 and lasted until 1978. It apparently brewed illegal beer for gangster Dutch Schultz during Prohibition. Stegmeyer Brewing started in 1863 and by the 1940s brewed 500,000 barrels annually. A slow decline in sales in the 1970s prompted the family to sell the brewery in 1974 to Lion Incorporated of Wilkesbury. Schwarzenbach Brewing began making beer in 1902. It shut down during Prohibition. Brewing began again in 1933 and finally ended in 1937. From 1939 until 2006, Rolling Rock was brewed at the Latrobe Brewing Company. The company was purchased by Anheuser-Busch. In 1899, 12 Pittsburgh brewers merged to form Pittsburgh Brewing. This merger included Eberhardt and Ober and Iron City Brewing. Valentine Ale is one of the oldest brands in the United States. The brand is now owned by Pabst Brewing. At its height, Valentine was the fourth largest United States brewer. Anheuser-Busch opened the Newark facility in 1951. Introduced in 1960, Champagne is a malt liquor with champagne-like qualities. The brand is currently owned by Pabst Brewing. The American Brewery had its origin in Baltimore in 1863. The American beer brand was brewed until 1973. The German Brewing Company started in 1901 in Cumberland. The brewery closed in 1974 with its old German brand going to Pittsburgh Brewing. Christian Hulrich Brewing of Washington, D.C. introduced the Senate Beer and Senate Ale brands in 1939. Due to poor sales, the brands were dropped in 1947. For 
Virginia Brewing was founded in 1889 in Roanoke, a city that became a major railroad terminal. The brewery closed during Prohibition and afterward continued brewing Old Virginia Special and Virginia's Famous until 1957. Spearman Brewing began making beer in 1934 and was popular with the local military personnel during World War II. It closed in 1964. August Wagner Brewing started in 1901 in Columbus with two brands, August Diener and Gambrinus. The brewery stayed in family hands until sold in 1968. The brewery closed in 1974. Carling's Brewing origin is in London, Ontario in 1840. The brewer entered the United States market in 1880 in Cleveland. The company's two brands were Black Label Lager and Red Cap Ale. The brewer grew rapidly from the 1940s to the 1960s, going from the 62nd in size to being in the top 10. G. Heilman purchased Carling in 1979. The brand is now owned by Pabst Brewing. The Columbia and Heidelberg brands were brewed in Tacoma, Washington. Hooterpole Brewing started in 1885 in Cincinnati. The brewer concentrated on the local market, which was its downfall and was sold to a local competitor in 1986. Burger Brewing was also a Cincinnati brewer. The company's recipes and brands were purchased by Hudapole in 1973. Stroll Brewing was established in Detroit in 1850. To expand nationally after 1980, Stroll purchased Schaefer Brewing, Schlitz, and G. Heilman. In 1999, Stroh's sold its brands to Pabst and Miller Brewing. Pfeiffer Brewing started in 1902 in Detroit. After acquiring breweries in Michigan, Indiana, New York, and Massachusetts, Pfeiffer was renamed Associated Brewing in 1962. In 1972, all of the brands were sold to other brewers. The Johnny Pfeiffer mascot was created by Disney Studios. In 1958, Carlings purchased the beautiful 1899 vintage Frankenmuth Brewing Company's brewery alongside the Cass River as part of its national expansion plan. As a way to make their restaurant a success, the owners embraced the Bavarian traditional look in 1959, which coincided with the Frankenmuth Bavarian Festival. The Siebelwing Brewing Company had its start in 1880 and lasted until 1985 making German lagers. The Bosch Brewing Company served the copper miners on the Kiwani Peninsula. By 1973, Bosch could no longer compete and shut down. Jacob Leinenkuko Brewing purchased the brands and continued to make them until 1986. Cam and Schellinger Brewing Company started brewing in 1880 and lasted until 1951. For most of its history, breweries brewed a Canadian brand which was created in 1877. The brewer became part of Associated Brewing in 1965 and then G. Heilman in 1972. Evansville Brewing produced the brand until 1996 and was sold to Pittsburgh Brewing. The Huntington Brewery was an odd operation, being in a dry county that made its beer in Huntington and shipped out of the county to where its customers were. Sterling Brewing was associated with breweries until the Canadian brewers shifted production to South Bend. It became part of the Associated Brewing in 1968 and G. Heilman in 1972. 
Sterling Label is owned by Pittsburgh Brewing. The Bavarian Brewing Company started in 1882, and its main beer was Bavarian Slight. International breweries took over the company in 1959, but the Covington Brewery was closed in 1966. Fall City Brewing made beer from 1905 until 1978. In 1977, the brewery became involved with developing Billy Beer during the Carter years. The Fall City label is owned by Pittsburgh Brewing. Gerst Brewing started out in 1890 and closed in 1954. Pittsburgh Brewing still makes Gerst Amber. Jackson Brewing opened its brewery in 1891 to make Jack's beer. By the 1960s, it was the 10th largest brewer, but by the 1970s, it closed. Dixie Brewing started making beer in 1907. A struggling St. Louis brewery was bought by Eberhardt Anheuser in 1860. While he had no experience in making beer, his son-in-law, Adolphus Busch, did. In early 1870, Anheuser Busch was the first brewer to use pasteurization, which made it possible to ship beer long distances. The brewer also employed artificial refrigeration and refrigerated rail cars at an early date. Anheuser-Busch, the largest brewer in the United States, joined with Belgian beverage giant InBay in 2008. M.K. Getz started his first brewery in St. Joseph in 1859. In 1936, Getz Brewing built another brewery in Kansas City. In 1950, Getz introduced the first successful malt liquor, Country Club. Clinton Brewing operated from 1868 to 1940. Four local breweries joined together in 1892 to form the Dubuque Brewing and Malting Company. The brewery did not survive prohibition. The Pickett Brewery started out in 1898 as the Star Brewery. Joseph Pickett assumed ownership in 1971. The principal brand was Pickett's Premium. Pickett acquired the Idlewise and Champagne Velvet brands from G. Heilman in 1972. The Waverly Brewing Company was built in 1914 to make Heilberg beer. In 1907, Western Brewing introduced the Stag brand, which went on to be the best-selling beer in St. Louis. G. Heilman bought the brewer in 1978. The Popple and Giller Brewery was founded in 1860. After Prohibition, the brewery was renamed Warsaw Brewing and made beer until 1972. Meyer Brewing closed in 1920 and didn't reopen after Prohibition. Kiwani Brewing operated for 15 years from 1905 to Prohibition. Peter Hand Brewing started in 1891 and had considerable success with this Meister Brau brand. In 1972, it sold its brands to Miller Brewing. Burke Brothers brewed trophy beer from 1933 to 1950.
One of the big four brewers in Milwaukee, Blatt's Brewing, opened its doors in 1850. The brewer was the first in Milwaukee to sell its beer in bottles and the first to go national. Blatt's closed in 1959 and its assets were bought by Pabst Brewing in 1960. In 1969, the Blatt's brand was acquired by G. Heilman Brewing, which itself was taken over by Stroh's Brewing in 1996. In 1999, Pabst again was in possession of the Blatt's brand with the dissolution of Stroh's. Malt syrup was often purchased to make beer at home during Prohibition. A. Gettleman Brewing began making German-style beer in 1891. The brewery was taken over by Miller Brewing in 1961, which still makes Gettleman's Milwaukee's best beer. From its founding in 1855, the Milwaukee Miller Brewing has gone from an annual output of 300 barrels to 40 million, becoming the second largest brewer in the United States. The company has six breweries, five can manufacturing plants, and a bottle production facility. In 1961, Miller bought neighboring rival A. Gettleman Brewing and General Brewing in California in 1966. Ownership of family-owned Miller was lessened when W.R. Grace gained a 53% stake. It sold its share to Philip Morris in 1969. Philip Morris acquired the remaining shares of Miller in 1970 and brought its marketing expertise to the brewer. In 2002, Miller was bought by South African Brewing to become SAB Miller. The Girl in the Moon had its start in 1909. Miller High Life hit the market in 1906. Brewing was founded in 1844 in Milwaukee. The Pabst name comes from Frederick Pabst, a sea captain and son-in-law of Philip Best, the son of the founder. Over the decades, Pabst acquired many breweries and brands either on its own or through acquisitions of other brewers doing the same thing. In 1999, Pabst sold or retired all of its brewing capabilities to follow a different business model. Paps 85 brands are now brewed by Miller Brewing or Lion Brewing. The brewer is best known for its Paps Blue Ribbon beer. The Paps Blue Ribbon name comes from being awarded a blue ribbon at the 1893 Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Red, white, and blue beer was Pap's original lager. And Decker beer was a Pap's premium brand.
Dr. Schlitz Brewing started in 1856 in Milwaukee. Schlitz began to become quite successful after donating thousands of barrels of beer to Chicago after the Great Fire of 1871. The brewer was one of the largest in the United States for decades. However, in the early 1970s, Schlitz changed the taste of its flagship beer while trying to reduce the production costs with high temperature fermentation. With customers deserting the brand and a crippling strike in 1981, Schlitz was acquired by Stroh's Brewing in 1982. Now part of Pabst Brewing, Schlitz was brought back in 2008 with the 1960s recipe. The economy brew Old Milwaukee was introduced in 1955. Schlitz also entered the malt liquor market segment. Washington Brewery was founded in 1897, survived Prohibition, and closed in 1947. Its signature beer was Primo, with the slogan, The Beer That Made Milwaukee Furious. The West Bend Lithia Company began brewing beer in the 1850s. The company is named for the lithium salts in the water used for brewing. The brewery, part of the Walter Brewery Group, closed in 1972. Hartford City Brewery began in 1875 and only lasted until 1882. The Haas Brewery origins date back to 1865. After Prohibition, it became Ripon Brewing, producing 6,000 barrels per year of Old Derby beer. It closed in 1937. The Oshkosh Brewing Company started in 1866 on the shores of Lake Winnebago. The brewery closed in 1971 and its brands were sold to People's Brewing of Oshkosh. The brewery's main brew was Chief Oshkosh Beer, named after the Menominee Chief Oshkosh. People's Brewing started in 1911, just a few years before Prohibition. The brewery survived and was sold to a black entrepreneur in 1970. Like many other small breweries, People's was unable to compete with the national brands and closed in 1972. The Beer Hut had a large selection of beers, 50 different kinds, including 30 imported brews. It closed in 1972 and is now a mall. Calumet Brewing opened in 1911 and closed in 1942. Chilton Malding began operations in 1901. In 1978, the company became the Brees Malding Company, which is still in business. 
While founded in 1866, the brewery didn't become young brewing until 1935. The brewery closed in 1958. The K Shire Brewery was founded in 1872, but it didn't make it past prohibition when it closed in 1920. The origins of Kingsbury Breweries dates to 1847. The Kingsbury name and brand arose during Prohibition with a near beer. In 1963, G. Heilman Brewing bought out the company and continued to brew Kingsbury beer until 1974. Miller Brewing still makes Kingsbury near beer. Rar Brewing started making beer in 1849 and after a few years also made malted barley for other breweries. The brewery was the first in Wisconsin to make a lager beer. The brewer lasted until 1966. The Hortonville Brewery lasted from 1900 to 1920. The Knapstein Brewery was in operation from 1869 until late 1958. The brewery put out a wide array of promotional material, including playing cards. Farmers Brewing started in 1913 and closed in 1950. It survived Prohibition and made three lagers. Ocado Brewing was founded in 1891, survived Prohibition and closed in 1965. Citizens Brewing was started in 1899, but didn't survive Prohibition. Its only product was Citizens Beer. Rhinelander Brewing Company was founded in 1882. The brewery was successful through the early 1960s, but closed in 1967. Huber Brewing purchased the Rhinelander label. Stevens Point Brewing was founded in 1857. In 1973, Prominent Chicago Daily News columnist Mike Roykel declared Point Special Beer to be the top American beer in a taste test. Point Special won the gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival in the premium lager category in 2003. In 1990, the brewery began selling its products outside Wisconsin in Illinois, Minnesota, Michigan, and Indiana. Polish Brewery started in 1908, became the National Brewing Company in 1914, and closed in 1920 with Prohibition. Grand Rapids Brewing opened in 1905. It tried to survive Prohibition, but closed in 1924. Marshfield Brewing was founded in 1889 and had a yearly capacity of 12,000 barrels. In 1966, the company bought two brands from Marathon City Brewing but didn't prevent the brewer from closing a year later. The Matha Ruder Brewing Company was the result of two brewers across the street from each other merging before Prohibition. The brewer had an annual capacity of 30,000 barrels and closed in 1955. Marathon City Brewing's origins date back to 1881. The original brewery burned down in 1912 and was rebuilt a year later. After Prohibition, the brewer made eight different beers until closing in 1966. Walter Brewing got its start in Eau Claire in 1874. The company grew to become a large regional brewer with breweries in Eau Claire, Appleton, Menasha, and West Bend in Wisconsin, and Trinidad and Pueblo in Colorado. During Prohibition, the company sold wort to the home brewer. As the national competition increased in the 1960s and 1970s, Walter shut down its breweries one by one until only the Eau Claire brewery was left. Adler Brow was the most famous beer of the Appleton Brewery. The Eau Claire Brewery had a peak production of 800,000 barrels per year in 1980, but was only 18,000 barrels four years later. Walters Brewing closed in 1985. The 
Jacob Leinen Kugel Brewing was founded in 1867. The company was a Midwestern regional brewer for much of its existence. In the 1980s, it positioned itself as a craft brewer. In 1988, Miller Brewing bought Leinenkuchels, which gave the smaller brewer national distribution potential. Leinenkuchels has two breweries, one in Chippewa Falls, one G. Heilman Brewing built in Milwaukee. Brewing started in 1874, burned down twice, and closed in 1943. Rice Lake Brewing opened in 1936 and closed in 1974. The brewery had a yearly capacity of 18,000 barrels and brewed Brunig's Lager. Washburn Brewing opened in 1890. It was an early victim of the temperance movement when the city instituted prohibition in 1914. Northern Brewing's origins date back to 1890. The brewery made lagers for the northwestern part of Wisconsin with an annual capacity of 25,000 barrels at its peak. In the 1960s, the brewer cut corners on the ingredients and drove away longtime customers. The brewery closed in 1967. Foxhead Brewing started in 1891 and lasted until 1962, when G. Heilman Brewing bought the brands and closed the brewery. The Hartig Brewing started in 1884, made it through prohibition on ice cream and closed in 1947. From its origin in 1859, the Kurth Brewery grew rapidly, reaching an annual capacity of 36,500 barrels. The company had five brands of beer, of which one was draft only. In 1916, the brewery had a major fire, but it was rebuilt. The brewery closed in 1949. The Reedsburg Brewery opened in 1872, survived Prohibition, and closed in 1950. The brewery had a capacity of 6,000 barrels per year. Capital Brewing rode the microbrew wave in 1984. Most of its brewing equipment came from a brewery in Germany. The brewery produces around 16 different beers per year, consisting of eight annuals, four seasonals, and up to four limited productions. Gabriel's Weifel began brewing beer to supply the local area but didn't reopen after the repeal of Prohibition. Bloomer's Brewery was a forerunner of the Joseph Huber Brewing Company, operated from 1845 to 1947. Brewmaster Joseph Huber gained majority control of Bloomer Brewing in 1947 and renamed the brewery after himself. It is the oldest continually operated brewery in the Midwest and second oldest in the United States. In 1985, the Huber family did not own the brewery, but was soon the owner again, operating under the Berghoff brand. In 2006, Mountain Crest Brewing Company of Calgary, Alberta, bought the brewery and brands and renamed it Minihass Craft Brewery. The Berghoff brand is brewed under contract. The Gottlieb Leuenberger Brewery opened in the early 1870s and had a short life, closing in 1882. The breweries produced 1,250 barrels per year. Mineral Springs Brewery started in the 1870s and closed in 1960. The original brewery was destroyed by a tornado in 1878. Potosi Brewing's origins date back to 1852. At its height, the brewery put out 45,000 barrels per year and distributed its beer as far as California and Texas. Tosi Export Beer was made between 1935 and 1952. Holiday Beer was produced between 1956 until the brewery closed in 1972. In 
In 1998, the brewery was purchased and is now a brew pub and restaurant. In 2004, the brewery was selected by the American Breweriana Association to be the home of its national museum. Cassville Brewing began brewing in 1854 and lasted until 1938. It was raided by federal agents in 1924 because it was still making real beer during Prohibition. The Hoosa Brewery opened in 1858 and closed in 1920 with the start of Prohibition. C&J Microbrewing was the third largest brewer in La Crosse. Its signature brew was Elfenbrown. John Gunn arrived in La Crosse to brew beer in 1852. Four years later, he joined with Gottlieb Heilman to form the city brewery. Gunn set out on his own in 1872 to found the John Grund Brewing Company, which became one of the largest brewers in the upper Midwest, distributing to seven states. Peerless Beer was the company's premium brand. closed with the onset of Prohibition. G. Heilman Brewing began as a city brewery with partner John Gund in 1858. In 1859, Heilman started on its brewery and brand acquisition path, buying up 14 brewers until Heilman was itself acquired by Alan Bond of Australia. Bond's empire collapsed and G. Heilman Brewing and all its brands became part of Paps Brewing. The former brewery is now owned and operated by a city brewery, which performs a lot of contract brewing. Old Style Lager was introduced in 1902 and was popular in surrounding areas such as Wisconsin, the Chicago area, Minnesota, and Iowa. Old Style uses the German practice of croissoning, which carbonates beer by adding fresh beer with yeast at an exact specific gravity. It also removes certain chemicals that affect taste. Old Style was a longtime sponsor of the Chicago Cubs baseball team. Heilman's second beer is Special Export Lager. The Arcadia Brewery opened in 1872 and closed in 1949. Adolf Schwarzhoff began making beer along the Mississippi River near La Crosse in 1865 and closed down in 1877. The Peter Bubb Brewery started in Winona in 1858, utilizing the caves in the bluff. The brewery catered to the local market, going from 2,000 barrels per year to 20,000. In the later years, the brewery tried to fight back against the national brands with some TV advertising, but eventually closed in 1969. Schuster Brewing started in Rochester in 1889. Trying to survive prohibition with near beer proved problematic and the brewery closed in 1922 never to reopen. Red Wing Brewing had its start in 1860 in the town of Red Wing. While it survived prohibition, its Red Wing and Kokens brands couldn't compete with the national brands and the brewery closed in 1939. Joseph Wolf Brewing opened in Stillwater in 1869. Three years later, the brewery burned down, and a new one made of stone was built on the south side of downtown by the bluff. The company became the largest outstate brewer before Prohibition put it out of business. The buildings still stand and house a brew pub and restaurant. 
The Theodore Ham Brewing Company started in 1865 and made 500 barrels in its first year. By 1886, its annual beer production was up to 40,000 barrels and the second largest in the state. The Massa Brewery was built in 1894 and was capable of producing 600,000 barrels per year in 1915. Much of the brewery complex still stands. After World War II, Hams was intent on becoming a national brand. The first foray outside Minnesota was into Texas and New York markets in the late 1940s, followed by Chicago, Kansas City, and Florida. To expand production to the target markets in the 1950s, Hams leased the Gulf Brewery in Texas from Hughes Tool. In California, Hams bought the Rainier Beer Plant in San Francisco and the Rheingold Brewery in Los Angeles. In the east, a brewery was purchased in Baltimore, Maryland with disastrous results. The dream of becoming a national brand ended in 1968 when Hoobline Brewing bought hams. Hoobline sold the St. Paul Brewery to Olympia Brewing, which later became part of Pabst. Hams became part of Stroh's Brewing in 1984 and ended up being owned by Miller Brewing in 1999. marketing efforts was the Ham's Bear. The clumsy dancing bear was first used in a TV commercial in 1952 and was a staple of Ham's commercials for the next 30 years. The beer bear was a well-known figure at Chicago Cubs, Chicago White Sox baseball games in the 1950s and early 1960s because of Ham's sponsorship. outside the old ham building. a premium brand using top quality ingredients. It ultimately proved too expensive to make for the small market.
associate itself with scenes of lakes in the wilderness for much of its advertisements, including playing cards. The origins of Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company date back to 1884. After the original brewery burned down in 1890, a new one was built which still stands along West 7th Street in St. Paul. Prohibition was kind to Schmidt Brewing in that its Malta near beer proved to be quite popular. In the 1950s, Schmidt introduced the Sportsman series of cans with different scenes to promote their new brand when the City Club brand was retired. of the best-selling beers in the upper Midwest. Schmidt Brewing was sold to Pfeiffer Brewing of Detroit. Summit Brewing started in 1986 and with the popularity of its beers built a 60,000 barrel per year brewery. This was the first new brewery constructed in Minnesota since the 1930s. Glick Brewing started making beer on the east bank of the Mississippi River in 1857. The original brewery burned down in 1880 and was immediately rebuilt. In the 1940s, Glick developed the first malt liquor stite. Because of the war, other fermentable materials were used that changed the taste of beer, and the higher alcohol content masked that. At 250,000 barrels per year, Glick was too small to go after the national market. It also didn't have the capital to upgrade its canning line from cone top to flat top. Bowing to reality, Glick sold out to G. Heilman Brewing in 1964. The Glick brands languished for years in numerous hands until they were brewed again at the Cold Spring Brewery in 1997. John Orth Brewery was Minnesota's second brewery when opened in 1850. In 1890, the brewery merged with three other nearby brewers to form Minneapolis Brewing. In 1892, a new brewery was constructed on the site of John Orth Brewery, which featured four different architectural styles to represent the four original breweries. The company changed its name to Grain Belt Breweries in 1967 to facilitate wider distribution after it bought Storrs Brewing in Omaha, Nebraska. By 1975, the brewer could no longer compete and was sold. The brands were sold to G. Heilman Brewing in 1976, then to Minnesota Brewing in 1991, and finally to August Shell Brewing of New Ulm, Minnesota in 2002. In 1940, a large neon sign with the Grain Belt bottle cap logo was erected on the west shore of the Mississippi River near downtown Minneapolis.
Water Tower Brewing was started by Brunswick, the bowling giant, in 1997 and closed in 2003. Bayer only sold keg beer for local consumption. The brewery closed in 1955. Rar Malding Company, a family-owned business, started out in 1847. The huge plant produces malted barley and other brewing materials. started in 1866 and survived Prohibition. The brew was bought by Arizona Brewing after World War II and was then sold to Mankato Brewing. The brewery closed in 1949. Ernest Fleckenstein Brewing began in 1900 producing 10,000 barrels per year. The company was well positioned to make it through Prohibition since it already was making soft drinks. The brewery closed in 1964. Mankato Brewing started in 1857, eventually producing 90,000 barrels a year. The brewery bought the Stag Beer brand from People's Brewing of Duluth. The August Shell Brewing Company dates back to 1862 when the brewery was built just south of New Orleans. The brewery is a real survivor, having made it through Prohibition and the intense competitive pressure from the national brands in the 1970s. It has positioned itself as a craft brewer making flavorful beers. The image of the deer has been a recurring symbol on its labels. a number of seasonal beers. In the 1970s, Shells entered the collectible beer can market, with Farm Fest 76 being the first. It also contract brews for a number of customers, including a number of liquor stores in the past. Hallenstein Brewing started in 1864 in New Orleans. After the brewery closed in 1972, Grainbelt bought the brand which went to G. Heilman Brewing when that company bought Grainbelt. Since 1996, August Shell Brewing has been making the brand. Cold Spring Brewing began in 1874 in Cold Spring. The company survived prohibition because of its spring water business. The brewery was quite successful through the 1950s with distribution to nine states. In the 1960s and 1970s, Cold Spring focused on being a low-cost regional producer with brands such as Arrowhead. In 1996, the brewery was sold to local investors who brought back the Glick labels that Cold Spring bought from G. Heilman Brewing 20 years before.
brewery also became more involved with contract brewing for customers like the Amish Amana Colonies. Brewing began making beer in 1870. The company continued to brew real beer after Prohibition took effect until a 1923 raid by federal agents. The brewery didn't reopen after the repeal of Prohibition. Pitker's Brewery got its start in 1881 along the shore of Lake Superior. In 1890, the brewery installed the first large refrigeration unit in Minnesota. The brewery survived Prohibition and went on to produce 100,000 barrels annually. Fitkers closed in 1972 due to competition from national brands. The Rex brand came from Duluth Brewing and Malding during Prohibition. building reopened in 1984 with a brew pub and restaurant hotel and shopping mall. The Iron Range Brewing Association was started by a former Fitkers employee in 1892. Countywide prohibition shut down the brewery in 1918. Virginia Brewing began making beer in 1906 but had to shut down 12 years later due to county-wide prohibition. The Bemidji Brewing started in 1904 and shipped out 6,000 barrels a year. Because of a treaty with Native Americans banning alcohol in the northern part of Minnesota, the brewery closed in 1915. Schroeder Brewing opened in 1878 and closed in 1915 with enforcement of a Native American treaty. The brewery's lager was served on board the North Coast Limited, Northern Pacific Railway's premier passenger train. Keywell Brewing started in 1893 in Little Falls and another brewery in Crookston was added in 1899. Its premier beer was White Seal, which came in three levels of strength. The Little Falls Brewery was sold to Grain Belt in 1959 and closed in 1961. Dakota Malding and Brewing opened in 1961 and closed five years later. A major factor in its short life was the first batch of beer was made with unfiltered Missouri River water. The phenol in the water carried through into the beer and caused many customers to experience diarrhea. Sioux Falls Brewing started out in 1874 and within a few years was producing 100,000 barrels a year. It made it through two periods of prohibition in the state but was unable to survive national prohibition. Schwenk Marth Brewing started out in 1901 with a small rundown brewery. A new brewery was constructed in 1904 with a yearly capacity of 51,000 barrels. Its rosebud beer was well known throughout the state. Stores Brewing got its start in 1884 when the company took over an existing brewery. 
Many improvements were made over the years, eventually resulting in 15 buildings and 150,000 barrels annual capacity. The brewery was beset with numerous state prohibition initiatives, which succeeded in 1917. The brewery survived national prohibition with a successful near beer. In the 1950s, Storzette beer was produced in an 8-ounce can with an orchid on the label and a line that said, Calorie Control. Storz sold its brewery and brands to a small Iowa company in 1966, which soon sold them to Grain Belt Breweries. Grain Belt shut the brewery in 1972. Falstaff's origins date back to 1840 in St. Louis. The brand didn't take off until after Prohibition and by the 1960s was the third largest brewer in the United States with plants across the country. Falstaff was sold to a California holding company in 1977 and eventually became part of Pabst Brewing. The brand was discontinued in 2005. Brewery opened in 1910 and made Prairie Pride beer. Texas Brewing started in 1890 with a 50,000 barrel per year brewery. The company did not survive prohibition. Howard Hughes started the Gulf Brewing Company in Houston after prohibition, which helped Hughes tool to survive the Great Depression. The brewery made two beers, Grand Prize Pale Dry Lager, once the best-selling beer in Texas, and Southern Select Lager. Lone Star Brewing had a start in 1884, with the Lone Star brand appearing in 1940. In 1976, Olympia Brewing bought Lone Star, which itself was swallowed up by G. Heilman in 1986, then Stroh Brewing absorbed Heilman in 1996 and concluded being a part of Pabst Brewing in 1999. The brewery was closed in 1996. The start of Pearl Brewing Company was in 1883 as the San Antonio Brewing Association. The recipe for the brewery's signature beer, Pearl Lager, came from Bremen, Germany via Bex. To expand, Pearl bought M.K. Getz Brewing in 1961. Pabst Brewing made an attempt to buy Pearl in the 1950s, but had to wait until 1985 to complete the deal. Coors had to deal with state prohibition in 1916, four years before it went national. Coors was well prepared for the calamity by moving into other kinds of manufacturing and making malted milk, which it sold to Mars Candy Company. In 1959, Coors became the first user of the all-aluminum can and makes its own cans to a subsidiary, which is the world's largest producer. For decades, Coors distribution was regional but went national in the early 1990s. In 2005, Coors merged with Canadian brewer Molson to form the company Molson Coors Brewing. American Brewing and Malting Company started in 1885 and closed in 1918 with state prohibition. The brewery reopened in 1933 as Great Falls Brewing until it closed in 1968. It was briefly owned by Blitz Weinhardt. The Montana Ale Works restaurant and bar opened in 2000 in the former Northern Pacific Railway Freight House. 
It serves beer from 11 Montana microbreweries. The Fuge Brewing Company started in 1899 to serve the copper miners. The brewery survived prohibition and lasted until 1963. Anaconda Brewing started in 1900 but was shut down by prohibition and the brewery was torn down. A new brewery was built in 1926 and beer was brewed there until 1955. Coeur d'Alene Brewing's Brew Pub opened in 2002 in the downtown area. The Growler artwork reflects the attractions on nearby Lake Coeur d'Alene. The Crescent Brewery opened in 1906 and was closed by state prohibition in 1916. The brewery reopened after prohibition as the Overland Brewing Company and lasted until 1950. Rainier Brewing started in Seattle in 1884 with the merger of three breweries. The Rainier brand was sold to a California company when Washington State Prohibition began in 1916. The brand was brought back to Seattle by Emil Sick in 1935 where it was brewed until 1977 when G. Heilman brought the brewery and brands. Taft ended up owning the brewery which it closed in 1999 and sold the brands to General Brewing of California. Rainier beer is presently brewed under contract in Irwindale, California. Olympia Brewing opened in 1896 at the Tumwater Falls of the Deschutes River. After Prohibition, a modern brewery was built upstream from the original. Olympia was a popular regional brand that went national as a low-priced beer in the 1970s. Olympia went on an expansion plan by buying Ham's Beer and Lone Star Brewing. Olympia Brewing was sold to G. Heilman in 1982, which ended up being owned by Paps Brewing. The brewery itself was owned by G. Heilman, Strohs, Paps and Miller, which closed it down in 2003. Weinhard Brewing was a result of the merger between Henry Weinhard Brewing and Portland Brewing. The brewery was sold to Paps Brewing in 1979, which sold it to Strohs. Strohs sold the Henry Weinhard brand to Miller. Lucky Lager was introduced in 1934 by the General Brewing Company of San Francisco, California. Buffalo Brewing started making beer in Sacramento in 1889. It merged with Roostaller Brewing, which made steam beer. The brewery survived Prohibition, but only lasted until 1942. Acme Brewing Company was established in Oakland in 1906 as a branch of Olympia Brewing. Anchorage brewed Prinsbrow beer was popular from 1976 to the late 1970s during North Slope oil boom. Primo beer dates back to 1898 when Honolulu Brewing in Malding first made it. Joseph Slitz Brewing bought the brand and brewery in 1964 and was later owned by Strolls. The brewery was closed in 1997. Paps, which bought Strohs, has brought the brand back in 2008. The Orland Brewery, part of Labatt's Brewing, survived the Halifax Harbor explosion in 1917. Dominion Brewing opened in 1878 and continued until 1936. Labatt's Brewing was founded in 1847 in London, Ontario, and was Canada's largest brewer. It was bought out by Belgian beverage company Interbrew in 1995. Molson Brewing was founded in 1786 and is the oldest brewing company in North America. The Fort Francis Brewery was completed in 1925 and had a 27,000 barrel per year capacity. 
Saskatoon Brewing Company started in 1906 and lasted into the 1960s when the brewery was sold to Labatt's Brewing. The Lethridge Brewery opened in 1901 and had an annual capacity of 100,000 barrels. The brewery was sold to Molson in 1959 and closed in 1989. Two San Diego businessmen founded Aztec Brewing Company in Mexicali in 1921 when Prohibition was underway in the United States. The brewer's principal brew was ABC Beer, which was like a classic American Pilsner. The Mexicali Brewery was started in 1923 and reached a 60,000 barrel per year capacity by 1960. The brewery shut down in 1973, but the German-style Pilsner was revived in 2000. The Hottaway Brewery was constructed in 1926 by the Bacardi family. The brewery was seized during the Cuban Revolution, and the brand is now brewed in Maryland. Guinness Brewing St. James Gate Brewery in Dublin started shipping its signature stout beer in 1788. Heineken has been brewing its pale lager since 1873. Roche Brewery was founded in 1615. In 2008, Roche became part of the SAB Miller Group. Founded in 1873, Tuborg sells a variety of beers in 26 countries. Tuborg has been owned by the large Carlsberg Group since 1970. Carlsberg has been around since 1847. Ringness is the largest brewer in Norway, now owned by the Carlsberg Group. The Dom Brewery was founded in 1894 and brews the Koch style of beer. Dortmund Reunion first brewed this Pilsner in 1873 for the workers of this industrial city. 130-year-old Herforder Brewers. Signature brew is Herforder Pills, a classic Pilsner. St. Pauli Brewery was founded in 1922 by the merger of two Hamburg breweries. While the Heidelberg Castle has a 400-year-old history, it wasn't until 1934 that Heidelberger Hall was added. Firstlich Brewing is one of the largest brewers in Germany with its draft Pilsner sold throughout the country. The Hof Brewhaus is a brewer owned by the state of Bavaria. Lohenbrau dates back to 1383. It has been a staple at the Oktoberfest in Munich since 1810. Falkenstein Brewing started making beer in 1918 and has a capacity of 80,000 barrels per year. It is part of the Kaiser Group, which is the largest brewer in Austria. The Herleman Brewery was founded in 1836 and is known for its yeast development research. Currently it is owned by Carlsberg. Asahi Brewing dates back to 1889. In 1987, it introduced its Asahi Super Dry Beer, which became a mega hit in the Japanese market. The Kirin Brewing Company had its start in 1870 when an American opened a brewery in Yokohama. The brewer's trademark beer was first brewed in 1888 
and still has a mythical horse dragon on the label. Sapporo Breweries started on the northern island of Hokkaido in Sapporo in 1876. The brewer introduced its popular Sapporo Black Label Lager in 1977. In an unusual move for a Japanese brewer, the company bought Sleeman Brewing of Canada in 2006. Kiuchi Brewery began as a sake brewer in 1823, making sake. In 1996, it began making handcrafted beers. San Miguel Brewery's flagship beer is San Miguel Pale Pilsen, which is the top seller in the Philippines and in Hong Kong. Thomas Cooper and Sons Brewing got its start in 1862 in South Australia. The company is the only remaining family-owned brewery in Australia. Castleman Perkins began brewing beer in 1877 near Brisbane. The brewery is a subsidiary of Japanese-controlled beverage company Lion Nathan. Carlton and United Breweries' origins date back to 1858 in Melbourne. Its Foster's brand is known worldwide. Reese Brewing started out making ales in 1897. After the founder dies in the early 1920s, the sons took over until Tooth & Company bought them out in 1929. Tooth & Company is one of Australia's oldest companies, having started in 1835. The brewery was sold to Carlton and United in 1983. Tui's dates from 1869 in Sydney. Tui's is owned by Japanese-controlled beverage company Lion Nathan. Pleasure to open a brew you've made and taste what you've created, and it's not hard to do. Some specialized equipment is needed to brew five gallons of beer, but not all the equipment that follows is essential. Water coolers used to mash the barley to convert the starches into fermentable sugars. Basics are a brew pot, work cooler, primary fermenter bucket, fermentation lock, hoses, bottle filler, bottles, caps, bottle capper, and bleach. A fermentation lock can be nothing more than a curved copper pipe and a shot glass with water, or a commercially made version. Bleach is extremely important to sanitize everything that comes after the brew pot boil. Bacteria loves room temperature wort and that's very bad. Corn sugar is added to the beer before bottling for the yeast to use to make carbon dioxide.
experience follow the German purity law. Irish moss is a clearing agent in the boil. For 11 pounds of barley, three or so gallons of 170 degree water is needed. The aim is for a temperature of 152 degrees to be held for an hour. After 30 minutes or so, a starch conversion test is done with tincture of iodine. If the color doesn't change, conversion has taken place. After an hour, draw off the wort and pour in the brew pot. When the wort is drained, the grain is sprinkled with 170 degree water to rinse out the remaining sugars. The liquid is drawn off as the sparging takes place and poured in the brew pot. Before the brew pot boils, the hops are weighed out. A teaspoon of Irish moss is measured out, which is put in the boil in the last 15 minutes. The boil should be as vigorous as possible. The bittering hops are added at the start of the boil. The flavoring hops are added in the last 15 minutes. The aroma hops are added a minute before the end of the boil. It's very important to cool the wort down to 70 degrees as quickly as possible. The counterflow chiller does this. The aerator adds oxygen for the yeast to start faster. The hydrometer measures the specific gravity of the wort. When about half full, pitch the yeast. When the wort is in, get the cover on and add the fermentation lock. to another vessel. Clean the spigot with Everclear grain alcohol. Open the spigot and try to get the beer to flow down the side of the secondary fermenter to reduce foaming. When finished, add the fermentation lock and a label of what it contains and when it was brewed. This 
one reason why the beer was transferred. Looks awful, but doesn't smell bad. On bottling day, run the bottles through the dishwasher in the heated dry mode. Add three quarter cup of corn sugar to a cup and a half of water and microwave for 10 minutes. Add the sugar water to the secondary fermenter. Insert the filler into the bottle and remove when the beer reaches the top. Take a final specific gravity reading to make sure the beer has stopped fermenting. Should be around 1.010. Boil bottle caps for 10 minutes to sanitize. Make up some labels, apply cellulose wall paste with a paintbrush to the label and apply.